Anyone that's in the cafe, can you please make your way into the sanctuary? Appreciate it so much. And ushers, can you help us with that? I know. Who went? Who went through uh, to the cafe today? Yeah. No. Yeah. You don't have the coffee. Something. Yes. Okay. All right. That's awesome. We are so thankful for Sister Nora and her team. Right. For always having something for us in the morning. Yes. I know how can, how sometimes we can get rushed in the morning trying to make it to church or anything that may be in our way. Right. So we're so thankful that we made it. Yay! Right? Okay. So um, before we start, we have some announcements. Uh, we have the Next Level Men's Retreat. That is on March 17th to the 19th. I just got word yesterday, the seats are getting full. We have not registered. So we try, we're going to try to register the men of, of the church, of the neighborhood church, this week. So if you would like to go to Men's Retreat, please put it in an envelope or talk to me or Pastor Carlos that you, or Pastor Mike that you will be going so your name is there. Right now, I would say do not worry about payment. It's just getting your name there just so you can make it to the retreat. Since we want to get the sweets, those go fast. And if you went to the Men's Retreat last year, yeah. they were comfortable, right? Yeah. yeah. You like the sweets, right? You don't want to be in a bunk bed. Oh. <laughs> okay, oh, so make sure you put your name in for the for um, the next level men's retreat. And those are two awesome speakers that you will be having. And I know Carlos, if you want more information on that, Carlos has more on that. He was talking to one of the organizers yesterday, and they're really excited for this uh, men's retreat. Okay, so I want to have it. You want to go to men's retreat? Make sure you put your name in. Now, or let us know, I'll put something in on an envelope, letting us know that you want to go, okay? All right. Our next uh, announcement is, I think it's our youth convention. I'm going to put the youth convention, it's up there somewhere. So youth convention for students, okay? Students. We also want you to, we're already starting our $50 deposits, okay, for youth convention already. It's going to be around $150, okay, to go. So we will need you um, and parents tell your, tell your students as well, if they want to go, that please turn into $50, okay? Uh, because it's also, we want to turn them in like mid-February, I would say February 19th. We want to turn them in, the names. We want to know the names because we need to be prepared. The hotels do get packed, so we want to make sure we have the room already reserved. And we want to make sure every single leader that is going, uh, according to what California is trying to um, implement, that we have those leaders in place as well. So we know, need to know how many students, we need to know how many leaders. Obviously, I will stay with the girls, Carlos will stay with, with the boys that are going. But in this retreat, I do, uh, this youth convention, I do want to mention that it's 17 and under. Okay, 17 and under. Because of the new laws that are coming, only students are 17 and under can go. And if they are 18 and over, they need to do an application, go through fingerprinting, and all that stuff. Okay, I just do want to make sure. All right, for that. We're, these are changing, and I know some of my young adults will be like, oh, but we would really like to encourage our young adults to go to the men's retreat and to the women's retreat. That is something more towards their age. Okay? Perfect. And then our last announcement is the annual business meeting on February 19th. Okay? It's very important that as members we're here <laughs> to because we're gonna vote on a very important thing. So we're gonna vote on moving our church to being a general council church. So we need, uh, we need you here. And it's going to be after service. And I promise, we'll try and keep you not that long. We're working on lunch, so that would not be an excuse for you to leave. We want you here, OK? Uh, we promise, like I said, we promise we won't be too long. If, and we will get you the bylaws as well. We will vote on the bylaws of the church. We will get to the, uh, those bylaws to you uh, soon. Okay, so you can review them, and when we are on the business meeting on February 19 at one, 
then you already know what we're voting on, okay? And do you have additional questions on that? Please let me know, okay? All right, everybody got the announcements? Yes, yes, everyone good? Okay, perfect, all right, okay. So as I was praying, I was like, and I didn't know I was gonna open today. <laughs> um, I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to, what do you want me to share this morning just to get you guys to like close and be able to start worship and uh, begin the service? And he led me to Colossians um, chapter three. And I'm gonna read from verse 15 and on it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, or one body, okay? You are called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Right? So we're here as one body to come and worship the Lord, right? To learn, right? To get equipped. So when we get out of we leave these doors, this place, we're able to apply the word to our lives and be able to share it with others as well. So let us stand up and let us pray so we can begin this service. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Knowing, Lord, that you're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no other God that compares to you, Lord. We can look up to the mountains and say, where does that help come from? Where that help comes from you, Lord, only you. So in this morning, Lord, open our hearts, our minds, that you'll be speaking through us, through the worship, through the announcement, through, maybe through, the, um, through our tithes and offerings, through the word, Lord, in every aspect of this service, Lord, that we may receive something from you, that we're ready and expectant for you to speak to us personally, because you are a personal God. I pray, Lord, that we, when we lift up our hands, we're surrendering all of, all of everything that's holding us back, that we lift up our burdens, that we leave them to you at your feet, Lord, and that we just focus, be able to focus on you and, and go into your presence and feel that peace and feel that joy of being here and in your house and connected to you. So I pray, Lord, that you would also take care of those that are able to make it, those that are sick, those that for any reason, Lord, that you will speak to them personally wherever they're at. And if they're sick, Lord, that you will heal them, that you may rapidly heal them, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we lift up your, our hearts, we lift up our hands, and we praise your name, in Jesus' mighty name.
He does great things. Amen. Not only a miracle working God, but He does great things. Yeah. 
church. Um, before I go to praying for the tithes and the offering, I just wanted to make a little announcement that uh, we just had our second week on Wednesday with Bible study with Pastor. And um, it's open to anyone who wants to come and just soak into his presence and let us learn all the words and everything that he has for us. So I just wanted to announce that. If you guys don't know, on Wednesday and the cafe, we're all in there. At 6.30. Okay, Mr. Frank. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read out of uh, the book of Matthew 6.21. For where your treasure is, there, is your heart will, there your heart will also be. And what are the benefits of these things? And it says it's God's promise. You know, in life we have so many people promised us so many things. And they were all broken, you know. And it doesn't matter because God ain't going to break his promise. He's one that's going to hold on to his promise. It's us who have to hold on to that promise that he has given us. Amen. So we just want to pray right now for the tithes and offering. Father God, we come to you right now, Father God. We ask you to bless, bless, Father God, these tithes and offering. This, is, this belongs to you, Lord. It does not belong to us, Father God. Help those that can give and those that cannot, Father God. Help us to understand, Father, what is important is you, Father God. You in our household, you in our life, you in our walk, you in our everyday, Father God. And let us hold on to that, Father God. We thank you for everything that you're doing, Father God. We thank you for the pastors here. We also thank you for our brother Angel, Father God, who gave the word at Devin's funeral, Father God. We thank you for him. Father God, we just love you, Father God, and we just give you all of our, all of our, what we have, Father God. We give it to you, Father God. You make a way, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
maximize, before you guys sit down, I'd like to maximize our time together. And let's just go around the place. You can just shake hands, high five, fist bump, and just say, Jesus is coming soon. And it's so good that we get to all come together like this as family. We're blessed, aren't we? Aren't we blessed to be able to get together? We get to come together like this on Sunday morning every week. I don't take this as a sandwich. Let's do sandwich. I am so You in the middle. Get together. You love on one another. Love each other. It's so good. Yeah. Amen. Introduce yourself to somebody. You don't know them. Tell them. Do you know what I'm talking about? You already got tickets. Brother well, Mike, God bless you, man. Oh, I love to see this. God's Just a song. 
Like, we heard lots of music in the 60s, 70s, 80s, not yet. All the, think about all the songs and all the genres. Those are just songs. We're singing about God. We're singing about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We're singing about something that is the most mighty power that will ever be on planet Earth. And right here with us right now in this city and all over the world, God is there. That's who we're singing about today. And there, there is no end to His kingdom. You are sitting here today serving a king. When we say king of kings, it's because there is no other kingdom like this kingdom. Every other kingdom you read about in history, they're gone. They've all collapsed. Now they have to go, and guys have to have degrees to be able to go and dig up those kingdoms that are no longer around to find out what they were like. You don't have to dig to find Jesus. His kingdom is alive and well on planet Earth, and it is shining and coming forth in many of your lives where you just walk around and you, I love it when somebody tells me, you ever seen that guy when he walks in the room, everything changes? That's some of you that I've heard about that when you walk in the room, and the atmosphere is down and out, it's not because of you and your type A personality or you're such a great looking guy or a woman. It has nothing to do with that because that comes and goes. But when you bring Almighty God's presence into that room when you walk in, then everything changes. It all changes. I was on my way here this morning and I was over in Colton. And I always like to talk to people. You guys know that. And so there was a lady that had made her, put her order in, and she was waiting there at the table. She had to go sit down and wait for the order to be fulfilled. So I just heard her say something about to the lady that she was buying the food from. She said, well, I'm on my way to church. So she went and sat down. And I said, on your way to church? I said, that was my open door right there. I said, that's a wonderful place to be on your way to this morning. And then we got to talking a little bit. And I found out from her that she was actually, she was in her 30s, and she was a little fearful about leaving her house because she said she'd been watching the news so much lately that she said, you know, I'm even a little bit fearful of going to church because of what might happen to me on the way to church or on the way back home. I, I really thought about that. That's the environment that we're living in right now. And the church... All the churches. I thank God for every church in the city. I thank God for every church in this county, for every church in this nation. Because we need churches planted on every corner in every neighborhood to dispel the darkness, to bring the truth to the people that have never even heard the truth. We think that everybody knows about Jesus in America. They may have seen his name on a billboard. They may hear these things like, uh, you know, prayer works. Yes, that is true, but does that mean that they know the truth? No, it does not mean that they know the truth. Now, there are most of you in this place, I believe, today that you know the truth, and the truth has set you free. And knowing the truth and knowing the truth is really two different things. There's truth here on earth when we speak to each other, and I hope that all of you speak in truth so that when you tell somebody something, that they know that what you told them is the truth. But there's another truth, and that is the truth that comes out of heaven, that there's no other name which men might be saved, and his name is? Jesus! So a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people have heard the name, they've seen churches, they see the cross, they see the steeples, they hear the music, but they do not know who Jesus is. And that's why we're here. That's why God left us here. We are born again. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. And now we know something that cannot be known by the mind of a person that is not regenerated. It sounds like big stuff, but to me, it just means that I gave my heart to Jesus. I surrendered my life to Jesus. And now He has come in and just rushed over my whole soul and filled me up. So now when I read the Bible, I say, yeah, how many have ever done that? You read the Bible and you say, yeah. You say, I get that. That wasn't just intellect. That wasn't just the syntax and the context. It wasn't just the, the time that it was written in. It wasn't just the people it was written to. This actually, how many of you have had that happen? It like it reaches out of the page and it grabs a hold of you and you feel something down inside. Sometimes it just causes me to cry. I start reading the word and I just start crying. It's like I close my eyes and God takes me to a whole new place. 
I know there are a lot of you in here that want to go to a whole new place because if you take everything that you are and all of your career and all of your education and your job, if you take all of that and that's all you have, you're going to left, be left wanting. You're going to be having this desire that's down inside of you to want more. You're not going to be satisfied with that. And you know, even after you taste of the goodness of God, you're satisfied and you have peace that passes all understanding. But oh, I'm telling you, I'm not satisfied. I want to know more about God. I want to get closer to Him. I want to know what He's doing moment by moment. I don't want to walk into a city and say, Oh God, what are you doing here? I want to walk in and God says, I sent you here. He sent all of you here. And you're going to know. And he's going to let you in on what He's doing. You're going to know supernaturally because it's heaven that's going to be imparted to you through the Holy Spirit. And you're going to know before you even get there what's happening. You're not going to have to walk in and say, what's going on here? You're already going to know what's going on. So I think I'm with a group of people here that want more of God. You want to desire and get everything you can out of this life. Is anybody in this place that wants to get more out of this life? You don't want to just be going, searching, and searching, and never finding what you're looking for. So this that we're going to talk about this morning is there must be more to life. There's got to be more to life. I looked at a whole bunch of polls, and I always do, about Americans and all of this research they've done and all of these interviews that they've done. All these questionnaires that they have, that they ask a question, American people fill it out. And it wasn't a surprise to me that over half Americans do not feel like they have any purpose. They don't have any fulfillment over, this is, now you can read a lot of different polls and you're going to get a lot of different numbers, but the one thing that I picked up on, and I agree because I talked to a lot of people, and that is that most people are not fulfilled with their job. It is not something that they feel like, well, that's my purpose in life, to work this job for the rest of my life and then retire and have Uncle Sam pay me so I can go to the beach and live in the Bahamas. And, you know, that is not fulfillment in life. And you'll find that out when you look at the reports, you look at the Hollywood, you look at billionaires, and you see at the end of their life that they're crying. And they had no fulfillment. They were still searching, even on their deathbed. And you know why that is? Because they rejected the truth. It's because when Jesus Christ came to them by the power of the Holy Spirit, they rejected it, and they became just like the people. I'm going to read to you this parable. And it was in Matthew chapter 13, when Jesus came out of his house, and there were a bunch of people on the beach that he was speaking to. So I want to open your thought up to this, what we see, not only in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but it is alive and well in 2023. Old patterns. So this is what we're going to be talking about today, because this parable was about sowing and reaping. I love the way that Jesus, he talked in parables. Remember last week we talked about a parable was? It was a simple truth that had to do with a moral or spiritual teaching, a truth that only Jesus could bring because Jesus is the way, the truth. He is the only one that you can trust. We heard that this morning. Do you have anybody in this world that you fully, fully trust 100%? There, I bet you that there's only, if you have one person, that's pretty good. But I know most people I ask say, well, no, everybody's going to let me down sometime or another. So Jesus is the only one that will never let you down. When he gives the truth, it is the truth. And then you're going to find out, yes, there is more to life than what you're doing right now. I want to say it again to all of us in this building. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you live. I don't think... I mean, I don't care how long that you have been with Jesus, there's still more to life than what you have right now. There's still, you can get closer to Jesus, and that's why I love this teaching of Jesus, sowing and reaping. And it's amazing when you see that he talks about a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. And he is talking about, a lot of times, with agriculture. I love this simple teaching. 
I can understand sowing and reaping. I know that Jan is taking me out into her garden. This is the most peace, peaceful place, I think, in all of the whole county of Riverside, the birds out there. And, and she's propagated, she's learned, sowed, and you've learned a lot about plants, haven't you? So Jesus was speaking to a group of people that they knew agriculture and they understood this. So I'm going to open this up. When you think about old patterns, all of us do this. We can get so caught up in everyday things so that it feels like that we're on a merry-go-round. How many as a kid ever went on a merry-go-round? I can't even do merry-go-rounds anymore. You know why I get dizzy? When I, when I go to the amusement, yeah, the teacups, when I go to the amusement park, I've got to be careful now. And I certainly can't have hot dogs and cotton candy and then take one of those rides because you're not going to see me anymore. I'm going to be back somewhere in the back right now because I'm sick. My eyes are cross-eyed. <laughs> so that's what it can feel like sometimes, spinning around and around, going nowhere. And it's easier to continue in the old patterns rather than change. There's that saying that I heard many years ago at a conference, and this guy said, he quoted another guy that's famous, and he said, people change, but not much. I want to change. Do I have a bunch of people in here in this building? Not because you're something wrong with you, but because you want to get closer to Jesus. You know, when you get closer to Jesus, you're going to change. The closer you get to Jesus, and the more that you take his teachings and apply them to your life, and that's where we're going to go, Lord willing, over the next several weeks, because roots has all to do with it. And Jesus compares these different types of soils and only those good roots, only those roots that go into fertile soil, those are the only ones that can expect a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Because if you read about all the other seeds that fell on different types of grounds that did not have a deep root system, that did not have good soil, guess what happened to them? Some came up and they died. They shriveled up. Some came up, birds came out, birds ate all the seeds. They didn't have deep enough roots. So a lot of these people knew what it was that Jesus was talking about. Patterns. I know some of you have patterns because your husbands and wives tell me about it. Patterns that they wish that you could break. And you probably say, I wish I could, but I can't. So no matter how you feel in life, God has given all of us this desire to live our full potential. And here's the ripoff. Here's the deceitfulness of Satan, of ourselves, of our society. We think that once we get to a certain age, we think once that we get to a point in our lives where we haven't done much, and all of us go through it, we think that we can never do much more. Well, I can assure you, everyone in this building, you can take this hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, I don't care where you are in your life, and God can take that. Can you imagine, even at the least of these, thirtyfold, did you know that whatever you've done, that God can take it, He can multiply it times thirty times. That is the least of these parables. Thirty times! So that means whatever you're doing for the kingdom of God, and what you have in you can now explode. You can have so much inside of you that you'll be overflowing so that you will have 30 times. And it won't be because of your passion or your ambition. It won't be because of any of that. It'll be because of what God has planted in you and what you can do for the kingdom of God so you'll have fulfillment and you'll actually take what God made you for and your purpose will be lived out. Not in heaven, here, right now. Does anybody believe that in this place right now? Here, right now. Say that with me. Here, right now. That God can take your life and can multiply it. I believe it. How would you like to go from 30 to 60? I think 30. I'd say, God, if you could multiply my life, if I really seek my roots deep, and if I understand this and you've already given me some truth, and if I want to go deeper, you're going to give me more revelation so that the more revelation you give me, I'm not going to just sit on the pew and sit in my house and do nothing with it because we know that if what God has given us, He said that those that have... I, he's saying this to you all today and to me. 
Those that have just had a little and have been faithful with it, what does he say he's going to do? He's going to make you faithful and rulers over much. That's what he said. So whatever God has given you to this point in your life, whatever revelation he's given you, and I think that there's some people in this room that you feel like that God has revealed some things to you. Does anybody feel like you've had any revelations in this room at all from the Word of God? I got some takers today. I got some people that believe that God has actually given them supernatural revelation that they, in no other way, through university, through a master's, through a doctorate, you couldn't have got it unless God gave it to you. Supernatural revelation to understand the things of God. And that's what Jesus was getting at when he was going over this parable about sowing and reaping. And I don't want to get stuck in a pattern. I don't want to get stuck in the same old, same old. And I certainly don't want to get stuck on a merry-go-round, because you know what that means? I start out here, I go all the way around the merry-go-round, and I spend 20 or 30 years of my life, and I come right back to the same place that I was when I start. I don't want that. That does not sound fulfilling. That does not sound like the God that I serve. The God that I serve, He says that you will live a life, and you will live a life abundantly. It won't just be a normal life. We become extraordinary people in the hands of God. And you just believe me with me today, as ordinary as you feel, that you would say, God, I feel like I become extraordinary in the hands of Almighty God. So that we can take this generation that we're living in right now, and we can take our cities, we can take our neighborhoods, and we can take the homes that we live in, and we can see things happen that we never would dream could ever happen. Because we get a hold of the truth of God. Just say thank you, Jesus, today. Thank just, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That we have received a revelation from God that He's taught us things and He showed us things that with the natural mind we could have never, never got it. We could not have got it. I was in a hospital, it's been quite a while ago, and I saw this on the wall, and I've heard it spoken about in funerals and in celebrations of life. And I thought about how no matter how you feel in life, God has given us all the desire to want this fullness, this full potential. And I saw this, I think it was over at Loma Linda. Maybe some of you have seen it over there with me. And it was about the dash. And I paraphrase it. It was on the hospital wall. It says, it is not the date you were born, not the date that you die. It's what do you do between that matters. You ever seen that? And it's, it's got... The date you were born and the date you die, but it's that dash in the middle. That's really what matters, isn't it? And that's what Jesus is teaching here. That what matters is happens between the day that you were born again and the day that you leave planet Earth. You don't have to settle for the past. You don't have to settle for the merry-go-round. You don't have to settle for all the lies that have been told to us and that we can't do it and we can't overachieve. You know how much I love to meet with younger people that I feel like that they have an entrepreneurial ship inside of them where they want to be an entrepreneur. And we got some young guys that I'm working with right now. I am so excited when they take the God-given gifts that they have and they do stuff that nobody else does and they go and start their own business. I'm so proud of this one guy that I'm working with that he went out, he leased the building, he went out, he said, I can do it because I believe God is with me. He went out and started a business, and it's just amazing how when you start to understand that, that with God you can do all things, and you don't have to listen to the world, you don't have to say it's according to my education or my personality, because with God, all things are possible. And I love people that are willing to take chances and risk, because when you have God behind you, it's not as big of a risk as you think it is, because God's going to give you all the things. And you know what the sad part is? The people that have that dash, and they live... All those years, they're born and they die, and all the potential that was in them is buried in that castle with them. So I'm here today to tell you that Jesus taught that a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold, and are you willing to take what God gives you and not just sit somewhere with it, and God gave you a revelation when you were born again, are you just going to sit there with that and do nothing with it? And that's what he was speaking to here. Are you going to be one of those ones that you dig your roots down so deep, and we're going to get into some real heavy stuff over the next several weeks, Lord willing. Amen. 
just give you a little advertisement of the future. Did you know what you do in your private life? What you do that only you know and God knows but you don't want to share with anybody else? Those things that you do that are immoral, those things that are not integral, did you know that that has to do with your root system? And if you want your root system to really go down deep, then you will do in private what you will do in public. And you will do it knowing that God knows what you're doing, and you'll do it to please Him so that you can take all the teachings of Jesus and not say, yeah, those teachings, no. Those teachings, yes. Those teachings, maybe. But if you want a root system that's going to go so deep that God's going to be able to say, that's where the 30 fall. It's going to be multiplied by 30 times because your root system is so deep. And then you're going to find yourself doing things that you've never dreamed. Did you know that some of you in this place have an anointing on you for business? Did you know that some of you have an anointing on you to teach? Did you know that some of you have an anointing on you to work with children? Did you know that if you don't do something with that, that you will have that dash, you will be born, and you will die, and you'll never know the potential that God put in you the day that you were conceived in your mother's womb, and there was a plan for your life, and you allowed so much to come against you. You allowed all your teachers, and all the negativity, and all the news, and all the people that were around you, and all the naysayers. You let it get so far into you that now you never even got what God revealed to you when you were born again. And he's saying, there's more, there's more. And you've got to get up in the morning, you've got to say, there's more, there's more. And when you're stuck on the merry-go-round and you're stuck in this habit and all these patterns, you've got to sometimes be like, and it, it's, it's crazy, but you've got to get up and you've got to rip those layers off and rip them off in the name of Jesus. You've got to apply the word to your life. And it doesn't even matter what your closest friends are saying to you. Because sometimes your closest friends, they don't even realize it. And they're trying to abort your mission. You've got a mission. Some days you're so excited, you feel like you're 10 feet tall. By the time the end of the day comes, because of all the negative and all the people have said stuff to you. I know what it's like because sometimes I'm feeling up here like I'm on the mountains. And somebody that I least expected says some negative thing to me. And I shrink like this little pygmy. And I'm crawling up to my house at the end of the day thinking, I can't. I am so worthless. I don't measure up. I'll never, I don't need to measure myself to anybody else. Neither do you. Because God put something in you that is amazing. It has the potential of 30, 60, 100 times. Does anybody know mathematics? If you take and you have one of something, and all, if I had one nice car, and it was multiplied times 30 cars, what does that mean? I got 29 cars to give away to a bunch of people that need cars, that love Jesus, and need a hand up. That's right. Amen. If I've been giving some, given some teaching ability, and God put it in me, and it's been in me since birth, if I don't start to develop that dash, then I will die, and I'll never take the potential that God put in me. I'll never even get it to maximize, and then I'll be like the ones that Jesus was talking about here, where it just didn't produce any more. So where Jesus said, where much has been given, and I'm going to tell you, everybody in this room right now, even at your regeneration, when you were born again, did you know you were given much? Yeah. To those that have been given much, every one of you have been given more than you can ever imagine because it came from heaven. Does heaven have any lack? No. no. Is there an economical problem in heaven? No. Is there a, a woke culture in heaven? I'm sorry, I just had it. Is there anything, is there a civil rights movement in heaven? No. Is there a, when you look at bank accounts in heaven, are they worried about paying their bills in heaven? No. There is no lack in heaven. So if heaven is living inside of you, what does that mean about what God designed for you? Can anybody stop you on planet Earth? Can hell stop you? Can the demons stop you? Can Satan himself stop you? They can, you cannot be stopped. Whatever God planted inside of you, it cannot be stopped. Can you imagine if you would step into that, what would happen in the next year or two? Can you imagine if we had all of this church here step into what I'm talking about, about what would happen to this community? What would happen to our families? What would happen to our nation if all of us stepped into the very thing that God planted in us and we stopped this nonsense about just getting stuck? I know there's a lot of people that feel like they're stuck. I talk to them every day. You don't have to be stuck. 
But you know what it may mean? You may just have to start hanging around the right people. You may have to change the crowds that you're hanging around with. When you have coffee with somebody where 45 minutes it's all negative, you may have to say, you know, I'm going to change who I drink with. I'm going to hang around somebody that's like-minded, that knows that if Jesus puts something in me, it's going to go 30, 60, perhaps 100 fold. And then we look at each other while we're drinking and say, you know, you got it in you too, brother. And you know that he's going to multiply it in you too. And then you start telling me I'm going to be multiplied too. Before we know, we're going to walk out of that place and we're going to be on fire for God. Instead of being so lukewarm and complacent that we're laying around all the time just waiting for somebody to come and stir us. I don't want to wait on somebody coming to stir me. I want to be so full of God that wherever I go, that it's just overflowing so that there's an abundance in me. So I have not only enough to take care of myself, but now it will be overflowing so that everywhere we go, we'll be able to minister to people. Isn't that an exciting life to think about living? So that's why I'm so excited about this church that God gave us all this square footage because I know He gave us all this square footage and He gave us a building for $3,200 a month at the most ridiculous interest rate I've ever seen. And if He did all this for us, and it only means one thing, it means God sees potential in all of you and He sees potential in this place. All night in Sierra, He sees so much potential, but now we just got to see it. That's it. We just got to get it inside of us. It's already here. So all you've got to do is just be able to receive it. Yes. And it's interesting. I'll see how far I can get on this today. But this isn't anything that's going to be on the board. I just want to read to you in chapter 13, verse 1, the parables on the soil. That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. And large crowds gathered to him. So he got into a boat and he sat down. And the whole crowd was standing on the beach. Can you guys, can you get this picture? Jesus comes up out of the house. He comes down there. All these people, we don't even know, but there was a multitude of people. And they're all standing on the beach. And he goes and he sits in the boat. And he starts out with the parable of sowing and reaping. And the different types of soil. Can, can you guys just get into this with me? Because if you're not able to get into it, if you don't really sink your teeth into it, you won't get the whole importance of what Jesus is teaching. So we'll go on just a few more verses here. And he says, And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed some seeds, they fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. In verse 8, this is the one we're going to talk about a minute this morning. But. And others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. I think I got some ears, ears here this morning to be able to hear what God is saying. So Jesus says, yes, there is potential for every human being. And it is powerful and it is great. And he wants us all to live a highly productive life. So the minimum here is 30 times. How many would just like to get the minimum? I would just like to get the minimum that God has. That's a multiplication. And he wants us to produce his crop and he's telling us about soil and soil that is good. So the absolute key to this parable, the absolute key is your relationship with Jesus. Just think for a moment. My relationship with Jesus. And you were born with that potential inside of you. So you can live a life of real purpose that will make a difference in the world because of what you receive from Him. See, if you can just come alive for a minute here. 
the potential is going to all have to do with your relationship with Jesus. And to the depth that you go and the amount that God is going to be able to this 30, 60, 100 fold, it's going to be how much that you receive from Jesus. We are going to have to be a people that we are so hungry for God. And we're going to have to get off of this merry-go-round. We're going to have to depart from that we are going to have to change. Change is going to be one of the hardest things that every one of us in this place are going to have to deal with. Because it's going to rock your world. When you change, everything's going to be rocked. And the only way that you're going to be able to even understand what I'm saying is you're going to have to receive from Jesus. It's going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why people, in the midst of a storm, that's why when everything is dark all around us, that's why they're able to stand up and praise the name of Jesus. That's why they're able to get up on the mountaintop and say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am so excited that we, I go on this small team of pastors, and it's Simmer, you know, Pastors United. We're going to meet with the new mayor, Helen Tran, next week, I believe it is, for breakfast. And she wants to talk to us. And we're going to talk to her. And then as I told you, we also meet with other city leaders. And you say, well, that's political. No, it's not political. It's because we want to pray for the people that are rulers and leaders over this city. We have a police department that has a head man there, Chief Goodman. He's a believer. So we are supposed to be praying for our leaders. That's what the Bible says. That is part of what God has placed inside of us. So we have the potential inside of us to change this city, to change our nation, and better, to change first ourselves, to change, and to change our families. How many would you like to be involved in changing your family? How many of you would like to be the one that knows that what God placed in you, that you will have a harvest that is second to none? And I'm so thankful that I think I have a bunch of people on here that now you're understanding and God is going to reveal more and more to you. And you know what it says in the Bible? It says that if you knock, that God is going to answer. If you seek God, if you ask for wisdom, if you ask anything, God says He's going to give it to you. So I want you this week, I'm going to challenge you with this. I want you to think as we work our way through these types of soils, I want you to think about well, what kind of a soil do I want to be? And when you go a little bit further into this, we're not going to have time this morning, you can see that as we read, there's some things that are hard for us to understand. He says in verse 11, he answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. That's a hard thing to really when you look at it, well, that seems unfair. Why have you let us know and you've opened up the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not been granted? So here Jesus clearly affirms that the ability to comprehend spiritual truth is a gracious gift from God. Is that what we mean today? A gift from God. So that you can understand anything about the depths of the mysteries of the kingdom of God, it is a gift from God. Because not everyone has that gift. People have rejected Jesus. And so again, this parable that I'm talking about, it's a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. I want to just finish with this so you know how blessed we are. Many of them on the beach that day, they had rejected Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, when we go further here in verse 12, you're going to see that he spoke in these parables because if they had the truth revealed to them and they still rejected it, it would be judgment. Follow me this morning now. I want to take some of you a little deeper. So if he were to explain these parables, and if they had the truth but they rejected it, there would be judgment on them. So that you know that there was mercy and judgment. Follow me this morning. Kind of wake up a little bit. 
is that it was both judgment and mercy. And that's why when we go to verse 12, we're going to see that those that had been given the truth and they did something with it, that there was going to be a multiplication. But to those that rejected it, it says that even what they had would be taken from them. So here we have this group of, of scribes and Pharisees, and a lot of those guys that were on the beach that day, they had rejected the truth. So Jesus was doing it, and he wanted to tell the disciples, disciples ask him, why are you Break it down, Jesus. That's what we do today. Make it simple. Give us like Eugene Peterson, the message where in our plain English, it didn't matter. And Jesus knew that. So there would be actually mercy on them at the same time because giving them the truth and them rejecting it, did you know that that would even bring more condemnation on them? So that's why it said that for those that it fell on good soil, there's going to be a multiplication. Because they accepted the truth. And now they're taking that truth and they're going deeper and deeper with their roots. Now I can do something with that. But these folks that come out here and they reject the truth, then it's even going to be worse for them because they reject the truth. They have the ability to be able to take that which is given to them. But they don't. And that's why we're still here on planet Earth. Think how exciting it is for you to be able to go to somebody that is in that condition and now you can extend love to them and you can go and reach them because by the power of the Holy Spirit and God in you, you'll be able to reach them and you may be the only appointment that they have to be able to have you explain to them and love to them. Have you ever been talking to somebody and all of a sudden they say, I get it, I get it, and tears start coming out of their eyes. I've had guys that I've talked to that were doctors. I've had people that all of a sudden, I know that they're starting to get it because I see that the heart, it's not what they look like, it's what's happening on the inside. And they start to get it and all of a sudden they're overwhelmed. It's like I've told many of you, that, that lady that was there in the federal court building that was a district attorney, she didn't fully understand it, but it was my job to explain to her when we're in the office privately, and she just starts crying and crying. She's embarrassed because she's in front of the other officials in the office. And you've got to keep your composure. You've got to look professional. And she's just pouring tears out. She says, oh, forgive me. Forgive me. She gets the pain. I'm embarrassed. I said, don't worry. I said, let me tell you what that is. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. And as you know, at first my human, all of us have human. I had, before I even spoke those words, I said, don't say that, that was not so stupid. But I just felt this function to tell her what it was and explain to her. And she said, yeah. Even though she was not even born human, she understood that language that it could only come from revelation, from the power of God through His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And we have it. So we have the chance to go into a city that is dark, it is dying, it is hopeless, and we can bring, bring hope to the hopeless. Yes. See, you you got to really sink deep to be able to understand this, don't you? It doesn't matter what the news is telling us. Amen. It doesn't matter that we are living in an anti-God, anti-Jesus culture. They can scream as loud as they want, but we don't even have to scream. All we have to do is walk into the room with the power of the living God inside of us. We don't have to scream. We don't have to hold signs. We don't have to go and get the news. We don't have to get thousands of people to walk with us. All we got to do is walk one with Jesus and the power of the living God will be with us that can change a nation. Now, can you imagine if you get a whole bunch of those people together, what's going to happen? Can you imagine if a bunch of people that we're talking about realize who they are in Christ and they allow their roots to really go deep and the things that they're doing in private are to please Jesus and not just wanting to be like the scribes and the Pharisees. Well, we're going to be real proud and arrogant. We're going to show all of you how holy we are. You don't have to do that. Because you're going to live at home just like you do out in public. So that your wife or your husband's going to say, yeah, they're just like they are at home. When you see them out in public, they're just the same at home. Oh, yeah. Instead of the kids having to come, and I have to hear it all the time, folks. They tell me, oh, you don't, you don't know them. 
You don't know my mom and dad. You don't know that they're hypocrites. They come home here, they live like Satan themselves. And then they go to church and they're all, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Well, I can assure you that anybody's living like that, your root system is going to be terrible. You're going to have root rot. You're going to need some Holy Ghost fertilizer. You're going to need, you're going to, need to take the Word and you're going to have to start getting in the Word. You're going to have to start to want to please Jesus. And even if it's a little thing that you say, everybody else is doing it, it's okay. You're going to have to say, I don't care if the whole world's doing it. I'm doing what I need to do to please Jesus. I don't care if nobody else is pleasing Jesus. I want to please you, Jesus. And then you're going to find 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold in your life. And everything you touch, you're going to say, this is absolutely incredible. I worked my whole life and everything I did just fell apart. But now that I'm working for Jesus, now that I want to please Him, now that I love Him, everything that I touch, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, and now you can go around and shout in the midst of darkness, and you can say, praise God, He really does fulfill His promises. Praise God, He will not let you down. When you hear these songs that say, Jesus won't let you down, He won't let you down, will He? You may go down in the valley of the shadow of death, like I have, but I come out on the other side every time. It's as though he takes my hand. I say, God, I'm not feeling it right now. I'm feeling like this may be it. It's going to all fall apart. And then I remember what the Word says. And I don't know how, but by the power of God, he takes my hand. And he just takes me up, up. Out. And then I'm able to look down in the valley and say, God, you did it again. Yeah. And the next time I go down in the valley, I say, you did it before, and you did it again. You did it before, and you do it again. And I'm going to tell you, if I haven't gone through some valleys, I would not know how big God is. How many minutes in valleys in this place? Wow, yeah. You might be in a valley today. I'm telling you right now that you pay attention to what Jesus is teaching on these types of soils. And you allow yourself to get your roots deep. And we'll talk about how you do that over the next several weeks. You're going to find yourself coming out of things that you never dreamed you could come out of. Come on. Yeah. But it's going to be change. Thank you, Lord. The next time that you get on that, just visually, it sounds kind of dumb, but just say, Satan, demonic realm, my own mind, I, today is the day I'm getting off that merry go round. Let that thing just keep spinning and just walk away from it. Say, whatever it takes, whatever has to happen in my life, Jesus, I want to be more like you. I'm going to die to the past. No more patterns in my life. No more am I just going to keep going round and round in circles. No more am I going to keep just crying about how bad it is and about nothing changes. No more am I going to say, what's the purpose, God? I'm going to know what the purpose is. I'm going to say, thank God that you are in me and I'm living the dream of being able to be that good and faithful servant. When you live like that, everything's going to change. Even the ones that are close to you. They're going to say, Brother Frank, like your friends. Did they say that, Frank? What in the world happened to you? You are not the same. They may even say something like, you're not even any funny anymore. You can say, praise God, you don't think I'm any funny anymore because I'm living in the light. You don't know what fun is. You don't know what fulfillment is. You don't know the peace that passes all over the state. When I lay on my pillow at night, and I have the best night's sleep because I'm not worried about nothing because if I die while I'm asleep, I will be instantly in the hands of Jesus face to face. If I drive out here today and a car hits me head on and I'm dead in a second, I know I'll be face to face with Jesus. So it's not bad. It's not bad here. It's not bad there. So we got it all, folks. We got everything. We've got all the riches of heaven, which there is no lack. We have it with us right now. And you're going to get to see it live out. And I know a lot of you, it's going to take a minute. And that's okay. You don't realize how much the world and the patterns, you don't realize how much it's got a hold of you. 
I wouldn't be praying at all for you. I would be praying that you come out of that. You don't have to live like that anymore. But you have to be willing to receive. You can't say, well, I know Jesus. I've heard the message before. I've been around this stuff for decades. You can't do that anymore. You have to step and say, today is the day. Jesus is able to deliver me. He's able to take me out. And I can't go on my past experiences. I can't go on what I think anymore. You know, I can't even go on what I think. If it's not lined up with the Word of God, I can't go on it. I can only go on what Jesus says about me. I can't live your life and you can't live my life. So the potential is in you today. So think about the soils. God's already revealed it to you when you were born again. You saw something that you never saw before. If you want to go further, there's some things that we're all going to have to do. So, let's pray today. Wherever you're sitting, wherever you find yourself in this that we've talked about today, know that God can take you to where you start to see amazing things happening in your life. It will all be through revelation. You will have to have God reveal it to you through His Word, through prayer, through meditation, through worship. So God, I just pray over everybody in this building right now. God, I ask that as your son Jesus taught this parable to all of these multitudes that were standing on the beach while your son was sitting in the boat. And he was telling them about the good soil. How this hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold would be experienced in the lives of those that had good soil. God, let us take a hold of that today. And God, let us not reject the truth so that we may change. God, I pray that we will be raised up to be an army that will be one in this church. That we'll set aside all of our differences. And God, that all the personalities will come together to be powerful in this place. And that we as a church will make room for all the giftings that are resident in this church right now. And for all those that are coming. Those that we don't even know their names yet that we will open the door up for them. So their giftings and the potential that's in them will be able to be put to work in this place so that we may lift up the name of Jesus, so that we may build the kingdom of God right here where we are. Father, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I encourage you to reach out to one another, to begin to build each other up. Maybe when you leave this place today, you might even be able to have an encouraging word to say to somebody. Wouldn't that be a good thing as we leave here?